Hi, I'm Luca, and welcome to this episode of Do It Right, Dynamic Hydronic Balancing. Today, I'd like to focus on dynamic hydronic balancing for room applications, and especially look at chill beams, another very popular solution for controlling indoor climate in offices, hotel rooms, apartments, and much more. So what are chill beams? Well, they could be simple heat exchangers or advanced air distribution devices used for cooling or heating rooms. And there are two main types. The first type is called passive chiller beams, where water flows through a coil connected or welded to different kinds of metal plates or things that cools down or heats up the nearby air and generate a constant air circulation by natural convection. The other type, active beam, is supplied by an air inlet coming from the main ventilation duct, which is used to induce air circulation in the room. In, in the last episode, it was explained that fan coil units react quickly to changing requirements. In comparison, passive chill beams are slower. But also, and this applies to all types of beams, you must actively monitor and control airflow, temperature and humidity to avoid condensation which may lead to reduced delta T performance of the hydronic distribution system, but also moisture dripping directly in the room, and you wanna avoid that. On the other hand, just to mention a few of the many benefits of chiller beams, you can save the money of a condensate drainage normally required by fan coils. And they are very silent devices because they have no built-in fan and their elegant look perfectly fits in the architectural concepts of modern buildings. So when we talk about fan coils or chill beams, there's no one best solution for every application. But the choice of one device versus another depends on the specific project or client and on the design, architectural and functional concept. But besides the differences between a chill beam and a fan coil unit, when it's about controlling these devices, it is always the best choice to use a dynamic valve with a modulating actuator so that, as explained in the second episode of this series, the water that carries the energy is always maintained at the right level and the system is automatically balanced under all load conditions. And this is the right way to save energy without sacrificing room comfort. In any case, I want to point out that not only dynamic hydronic balancing is needed for the optimal performance of a chiller beam application. You should also consider the right combination of field devices to enhance comfort and energy efficiency. However, dynamic balancing applications in the room are sometimes designed with on-off control systems for many reasons, including budget. And in this case, the most important function is to make sure the supply flow is maintained constant whenever the actuator is open by the two-point control system. Here, a thermal actuator could be a good choice. Thermal actuators are basically temperature-operated devices, where electricity eats up a wick's cartridge, which expands and retracts. And this kind of actuator is quite slow compared to other technologies, but also very quiet, perfect for noise-sensitive environments, and therefore ideal for chill beams. Another common option is to use actuators operated by electrical motors, which convert the rotational movement of a gearbox into a linear travel of the actuator stem that controls the valve. For example, these actuators is quite fast, opening or closing in 10 to 12 seconds. Sometimes they represent a better choice if the concern is to close the unit quickly and avoid recirculation of too hot or too cold water back to the generation part of the hydronic system. In the next episode, I'm going to focus on air handling unit applications. Thank you for watching. Do it right, dynamic hydronic balancing.